The sum and substance of teachings and the achievements of Christ, which may have been interpreted as miracles, were nothing more nor less than faith. If there are any such phenomenon as miracles, they are produced only through the state of mind known as faith. Some teachers of religion and many who call themselves Christians neither understand nor practice faith. So that's a quote from Think and Grow Rich. And this, I agree with most of the stuff in this book, not all of the stuff in this book. This is a book of the month that Meyer and I are reading together. But that, when I was reading this chapter on faith, I was like, this is crazy because we had already had this video planned. Anyways, if you're new here, my name is Della. This is my husband, Meyer. <laughs> um, we have three little girls and we just had a little boy seven months ago. Yeah. No. Nah. Eight months eight, ago. Eight months ago. <laughs> it's yeah. been a long eight months. <laughs> um, it's kind of cold. We need to let that window up, please. You gonna edit that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we had three little girls, and we finally had our little boy. In this age of manifestation, uh, what else? Um, vibrations. What else? <laughs> Myers laughing because he has a. He knows someone that uses that term a lot. Yeah. About to, okay. Anyways, um, I just wanted to have a candid conversation mm -hmm. about our journey through, you know, having a boy after three girls, kind of yeah. what we went through. Oh, there goes my lips again. The camera's making us look a little weird. Um, what we went through, what we've learned from God and mm -hmm. what it looks like to position yourself to ask him for stuff yeah. and, um, and just kind of talk through that. Because pretty much what that quote in the book was saying is like, the whole Christian faith, and I don't think this guy is a Christian, but the whole Christian, like, religion, I guess you could say, is based off of faith. But he was challenging in saying that not only do Christians not know what faith is, but also pastors and yeah. people who claim to lead. And I thought yeah. that was deep and profound. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think he's right. Yeah. And so I want to talk about it from a perspective of people who we consider ourselves Christians. Like, I think this mm -hmm. whole new age thing, I think there is truth to it, but I think it's been manipulated and, yeah. and, and, and perverted. Um, so I want to talk through that. So it's kind of going to be a mix between like, maybe you're watching this video because you do have several girls and you're believing God for a boy, mm -hmm. or maybe you just want to know what it looks like to ask God. I will say I am not a the, what do you call it? A theologian. theologian. I did not go to Bible college or anything like that. We just love Jesus and we live our lives by those principles. <laughs> um, but because I and I say that because I think this concept of asking God for whatever it is that you desire. OK, we're back. My car was full. I was saying that um, what it's like to ask God for something is pretty much. I feel like a topic that's worthy of being studied, like yeah. very much studied and poured over. So we haven't done all that. We're just walking y'all through what we've seen and what, how we've seen God work and perform miracles in our life and how we feel like we've positioned ourselves for those miracles to, to take place. Yeah. Okay. So we've been married for eight years. Um, almost nine, which is crazy. Uh, we have three little girls. We got pregnant right after we got married. So we had a honeymoon baby pretty much. Um, and just some backstory. Meyer actually comes from a family of all boys mm -hmm. and they have one girl in his generation, right? You're out of you, all the cousins, yeah. there's one girl. And uh, so that like, even just us getting married, there's a lot of pressure to have a boy. You know, we love being girl parents, mm -hmm. um, but there was a lot of pressure for that. And honestly, I just saw myself actually being a boy mom yeah. because I'm just, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> the fluff, I just, I'm not about all that, which that's not what girls are about. Anyways, <clears throat> so we had, Naomi first. Naomi, yeah, yep. And even with the pressure to like have all boys and stuff, once we met her, I was just like, oh, yeah. this, I like this. She was chocolate and she has cute little curls. Yeah. Like, so that was cool. We're still excited. And then we had our second girl. Kaziah. How far apart were they? That was like uh, um, two and a half years. Yeah, so we had our second girl, and I was like, okay, like, what's about to happen here? You know, like, are we going to be all girl parents? <laughs> like, yeah. what's happening? Um, and then I had already had two C-sections. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I was like, okay, let's, by the time we got pregnant again, we found out that was a girl. And I told Maya, I said, if I have another C-section, yeah. like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. And... 
we ended up having um a mir- that was our miracle v back if you've been watching for a while i have a video on that we had our miracle v back and uh so what I mean by that is pretty much they were about to roll me back for my third C-section and yeah. right before we were praying. Yeah. And literally right before they rolled me back, like they had shot me with the medicine to numb me. They were rolling me back, yeah. about to cut me. And she came yeah. and I had pressure and I was like, y'all need to check. Need to check. So she's like, I mean, I guess we'll check you, uh, you know, remember? Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my mind around this as I just want to get to the faith okay. stuff. Okay, so that was that was miracle number one. So I told him I said I'm done having kids if I don't get if I don't have a vaginal C. And so we were yeah. about to be done, but it was almost like God was hinting, "Don't give up." Yeah. And so I feel like that's what happens when it comes to faith. If it's something like there's a scripture that says that the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. Like what is it? Trust in Him and He will give you the desires of mm-hmm. your heart. But pretty much, and I used to think that God would give me the desires of my heart, but now I literally think that scripture means he is putting desires in your heart, right? And so I felt like that was kind of hint number one or whisper from heaven is what I kind of call it in my book. So we had our third baby girl. She's super sweet. And we were kind of just living our life, hashtag girl parents. And um, I think it was football season, right? Where I was just like, tired we were living in the rv and i was yeah. asking god i oh, was yeah. like you remember yeah. <laughs> i was asking god i felt like it might be irresponsible to bring another kid on this earth in the mindset that i was in then yeah. like just stressed overwhelmed yeah. um all these things and so I was talking to my I remember I would always tell you like I don't think I should have another kid I don't think I can do it even with the miracle be back even though I had my be yeah. back all of that I was like I don't think I should do it and I'm like no nah, but remember what you said he's like yeah but also I should have preferenced this with too. Like Meyer has the gift of faith. I think there is operating in faith I think you can be I think you can truly be gifted with faith mm-hmm. and fact check me but I really do. Like, I just know people that they believe the impossible. There is no nothing impossible. Literally nothing impossible. And your cup, like, you, you're pretty much cup half full. Cup half full, yeah. I am not cup half full. <laughs> but I'm not in it. I'm probably the most positive yeah. cup half yeah, empty yeah. person you've ever met. Yeah. Because I'm like, nope, the cup is not half full. The cup is half empty. And if we don't get some water in place, then yeah. the cup will stay half empty. So that's kind of my approach to faith. Yeah. Uh, it has grown. My faith has grown so much. I think, yeah. you know. No, it has grown. I think you've rubbed grown. off on me. <laughs> um, but I say all that to say, so a lot of times when we have the conversation, and sometimes I feel like I just ask you your opinion just to build my faith. Because mm-hmm. I know that you will build my faith. Mm-hmm. And also, I was at home with the kids, so I think it was just easier for him to say, keep going, keep having kids. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, but I consider you too. Because also, we weren't about to have 12 kids just to have a boy. True, true. I was not about that. Um, Which is nothing wrong with having 12 kids. I just don't yeah, think I that's mean, our ministry. I mean, I like kids. So. I don't think that's our ministry. <laughs> um, so, y'all, let me tell you the first thing that happened. Um the book I just wrote, I talk about whispers from heaven. This still creeps me out to this day. So I was crying. I think it was football season. Either it was football season or we were just in the camper. We were in the camper, Mm -hmm, but I was at my peak of overwhelm and I was literally crying out to the Lord. I said, I don't think I can do this anymore. I think that we need to make a permanent decision to just be done having kids. And I was like, Mm -hmm. God, if you don't want me to do that, you need to show me something, right? And so, I don't know if this was on the same day. Y'all forgive me. My memory is blurred. It wasn't the same day when Naomi's thing. Mm, no. no that okay, so tell them about Naomi's thing. You can tell them. About Naomi's thing. Um, man. It was in the camper, too, though. It was in the camper, too. And it was just a rant. It was just a rant. I think it was a weekend. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, Daddy, my brother's name is going to be this. And me and Della had already predetermined what we'll name him, right? Which is a part of faith. Hold on. Don't forget that. Yeah. Uh, there's another quote in this book that says, like, once you give your desire and emotion mm-hmm. and all these things, then it builds up your faith. We've had uh, Malachi's name. We've had Kai's name picked out since we've been married, I think, yeah. since day one. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I was like, OK. Then she and she wrote she wrote the first letter in his name. She wrote an M. 
And I'm like, what? on a napkin or on something. A, yeah, like she just wrote it. And she, this way, when she first was like, work on reading mm-hmm. and writing. And we never spoke about his name. We never spoke about having a little brother. We never said anything. But she already had it in her mind. It was a desire in her heart. Yeah, it was a mm-hmm. desire in her heart. Like yep. She already had it in her mind mm-hmm. and her spirit that, like, I'm going to have a brother. Yeah. His name is going to at least start with this letter. So and we need to like, explore her giftings. Um, yeah, but yeah, sure. that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, oh. So she wrote an M on there. <laughs> she wrote an M. And we were like, oh, wow. Okay. So then another yeah. some other time it was two separate times i was again <laughs> overwhelmed there's a theme here um but i was like nope this is it i don't care we're done with this and i went to bed overwhelmed with that and i woke up the next morning and i was like they'll snap out of it um like today's gonna be a good day so i was up mm-hmm. in the camper just studying and i was like i'm gonna study i'm gonna read my bible and i am going to go for a walk or something and just listen to my podcast. Like I'm going to yeah. do what I usually do in, in this morning. I'm going to make this a great morning. So I was crying out to God. I was praying. I was journaling and I was like, God, you need to send me a sign. And how faithful is God to send us 25,000 signs of the things that he's already, he's already asked us or told us that he, that he's already promised us. And so y'all, I put my podcast buds in my ear after that prayer and I pushed play on one of my favorite podcasts. Yeah. And the person in the podcast was screaming, I'm having a boy, I'm having a boy, I'm having a boy, I'm having a boy. Like literally yeah. screaming it right after I prayed and asked God, what do you want me to do? Like, do you want me to have another kid? Is it going to be a boy? Like, is this a promise that you've given us? Or is this something I just want and, and I want to have control over? And y'all, I got chills. Yeah. Like down you my spine, me. You yes. Me after that. And I was like, "You will never believe what just happened." And I and I and I put the, I shared this story in my book because it just shook me. It was like yeah. God, whenever you're trying to lay down something that you've asked God for, He will literally beg you, "Please don't." Like, don't. It was just moments where He was like, "Don't cut off the the miracle that's in motion." Yeah, for sure. And so that happened. So then we get pregnant, and. um Actually, we need to let's pause. Let's talk about the naysayers because <laughs> I don't like to focus on negativity, but that's a real thing I feel like yeah. you will face when you're asking God for something that seems impossible or yeah. not even impossible. That's not in your control. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. Because it's not in your control. There's so many scientific like there's there's so many things that you can do to conceive a boy. I know y'all have seen all those videos or yeah. girl or you know and I think there might be some truth to it, but yeah. ultimately, here's what we've learned. <laughs> Trust us. Right. God is in control. Yeah. Okay. Because the way that they say that you conceive a boy, we're like, that's nah, definitely how we try do it. that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, that's how we do that activity. But anyways, it's in it's in God's control. And so, um, after that, yeah. So, let's, let's fast forward to we conceived the boy but we didn't we did not find out what we were having until the birth until the birth and part of that was i think i think there was two parts to it one was that we just got tired of people in their stupid negative comments yeah like especially you like people would be like dang man you only got you know girls all girls all girls like yeah and they're and they're dope too yeah so yeah so we just stopped. I think we sh- we had finally come to a place of surrender. And I feel like that's like my next, like if I had yeah. steps, I think when you come to a place of surrender, not giving up a place of surrender yeah. to where you realize like, Lord, your will, not my will be done. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I hate when people pray you know, if it's your will, Lord, because I feel like it's a cop out, like, yeah. no, ask him for it. Like come to the yeah. throne with boldness, but also I think when we had come to a place where we're like repentant for like trying to manipulate the situation and we're like, this is not in our hands. This is in your hands. It's like, you're not, you're not saying your will be done because you're giving up, but you're saying your will be done because you're finally at a place where you're like, I'm not in control of this. God, you're in control of this. So, you know, like I, I trust you. Yeah. And I'm truly content with 
if you bless us with another girl, right? And cool, mm -hmm. you did not want this for me, right? Yeah, it's literally your will. Yes, so like, and I'm safer in your will. Yes, exactly, exactly. And we truly believe that. Like people yeah. say that, and they're not at that place of surrender. Yeah. We were at that place of surrender, so we didn't find out the gender because we didn't want people saying crap to us. I wanted to enjoy my last pregnancy. I didn't yeah. want no dumb comments. Yeah, and. Also, just because we were at that place, like, yeah. I'm like, Mary, you come from an all boy family, all of them yeah. like coach and all these things. So, yeah. first of all, the four girls we have are going to be phenomenal at yeah. <laughs> whatever they do, because like, what are the odds of that? This is truly what God wanted for us. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I just want to be protected from what it wasn't because, you know, you have options. There's I guess you could do IVF. You could pick the sex and all that. There's just some things in this life where I feel and there's nothing wrong with IVF. I, yeah. I understand people going through um, fertility, but I'm saying for the purpose of picking out the sex of your baby. Yeah. Um, we just decided there's some things that should be in the control of the Lord yeah. um, and that we got to a place where we were like, no, like this is one of those things. And uh, also another thought that I had where I was like, if this is a, a girl, I felt like there was a little boy out there that really needed to be adopted by yeah. us because yeah. I think that's the next thing is like, we knew the what, but we didn't control the how. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. we knew we wanted a son, but we, we didn't want to control that. We couldn't control the how. Yeah. So we knew like, also we said, I think we said like, if this is a girl, then we will adopt a son. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. And that's where we're trying to get. Like, that's another reason why we're having this conversation is because we're believing God for things that seem impossible, mm -hmm. that are out of our control. We know the what, though. Yeah, we know the what. We know we have the purpose and we have the passion, mm -hmm. but we don't know how it's going to happen. We don't have the plan. Yeah. He has the plan. Yeah. So we conceived the boy and then we, so we don't find out we're having a boy. People are telling Meyer like, dude, are you serious? He's like, I mean, like you have another baby. Do you believe a good boy? He's like, yeah. Like yeah. if you asked you, you were like, yeah, I, was, I would say no matter what it is, we're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is what it is. Uh, and I had a friend, Miss Anna, actually. Yeah. It's so cool. Like I wanted to talk about like borrowed faith. You can borrow the faith of people around you. So sometimes there's things that I ask God for. God will give me the vision, but he'll give you the faith. Yeah. It's so stupid. Like, <laughs> yeah. not stupid. Yeah. Sorry, God. But it yeah. happens a lot. It, that happens a lot, actually. Yeah. He'll give me the vision and yeah. Meyer will be like, perfect. Like, uh, like all right, we will do it. Yeah. If you're like, uh. <laughs> In 12 years. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be like, nah, we ain't, nah. But I think about the story of where they brought their friends. It's in the New Testament where they were bringing their friend through the roof to be healed. Yeah. And so yeah. it was by their faith that he was healed. Yeah, yeah. And so you can literally, either you can be the voice that that puts doubt in your friend's minds or you yeah. can be the voice that puts faith. And so I think about my friend and saying that she literally, for the baby shower, we had a neutral journal baby shower. This woman bought all boy clothes, like <laughs> a ton, did. like this big old box full yeah. of boy clothes. Yeah, she did. <laughs> She did. And she would be like, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this boy right now. <laughs> and she, I was like, This is too much. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Um, so, anyways, we go and we have, and you can see our birth vlog. You probably already have seen it. But we go, and it's not until he comes out no, yeah. that we find out, like, Oh, it's a boy. Yeah. And so when they hand me, and then I, there was a moment where I was just in the bed and I was just in tears because yeah. I'm like, Yeah, I remember that. I had to be back a natural birth yeah. and I'm holding my little boy that I thought, cause I had come to the end of myself and that's where you have to be. Yeah. You have to come to the end of yourself. And I was holding this little boy that I had to, I had to tell God, like, if you never do this for me, I believe in your ability to do it. Yeah. But I also trust and believe in your sovereignty. Yeah. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Yeah. And that pretty much means I know you can do it. Like we don't have to, we're not out here. We don't have to. It's not our job to make God look good. I think yeah. that's what we think. We think if we will operate in faith and we fail, then we're going to make God look bad. Yeah. God don't need our help. And if you serve a God that needs your help, you serve in the wrong God. Yeah, for sure. So it's not embarrassing to him when the things that the plans that we have don't come through. Mm -hmm. But just holding my son for the first time, I'm like, wow, like I'm in the midst of receiving something that I was fully prepared that if he never did it, I would have to be okay. Yeah. But also knew that if I saw it come to pass, like, wow. Wow. And you kept the, the backpack. The backpack. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. Yeah, the backpack. We bought this blue backpack. 
Yeah. We didn't bring it. <laughs> I thought it was so cute. And I yeah. bought it when I got pregnant with my second kid because I just yeah. knew it was going to be a boy. Yeah. And clearly it wasn't. <laughs> it, yeah. And we had we were living in a different house. Mm-hmm. And this backpack had a, a UT outfit in it for a little boy that yeah. I had bought. And then it had these shoes that my brother had gave me for Naomi, but they were totally boy shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. just kept them. Yeah. yeah. So I kept them in this backpack. And when we were leaving, we were moving, like, I had to decide, like, am I going to sell this backpack? Mm-hmm. But I decided I'm not going to use this backpack for any girls that I have. Mm-hmm. This is my son's yeah. backpack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the whole idea of, like, making something, like, attaching feelings to a desire, uh, making a desire real. And I'm not trying to make this, like, please, no, I'm not talking about this stuff they're talking about, the manifestation, all that. I'm not. I'm really not. Like, the Bible says, like, as a man thinketh, so is he. Yeah. And I was literally walking in that. I'm like, you know what? I feel like God gave me this promise, so I'm going to keep mm-hmm. it. And it was hard. Yeah. Even when we moved out to where our RV was and where yeah. we live now, I, the backpack was in the storage collecting dust. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember pulling that bag out. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, this is like a representation yeah. of faith delayed like a delayed Delayed. not even not delayed that's not even the right word that's like delayed hope like we held on to the hope i don't know what the words i'm looking for we use hope we to materialize faith like to see it yeah and so to pull out that backpack and know that yo we held on long enough to see god's goodness on this side of the earth and that's how i want to be for everything else we're asking him for yeah for sure because it's crazy. This is what I say in my book. It's crazy or it don't. No, 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 no. That's what Mike, Mike Todd says. That. It's crazy, right? Like he talks about crazy faith. This yeah. is crazy. This is literally what he's talking literally. about. But in my book, I talk about it don't make sense to nobody else around you yeah. until, it makes sense. until it makes sense. And when it makes sense, it's like, of course, you guys have a boy after three girls. It's like, <laughs> no, but you didn't have that energy. Yeah. You thought we all that shade earlier. Bro. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> Anyways. Um. <laughs> So we have a little boy. We're so excited. And here's the thing that's so hard. And we're about to close. I know this is getting long. I'm amazed at how much work it still is. <laughs> no, for real. Because I feel like when we ask God for something, for yeah. some reason, we just feel like it's going to only come yeah. with butterflies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This little boy yeah. is rocking our world already. And I don't mean that in a beautiful way. I mean, like, <laughs> so oh, much work. He is not, I love him, love him. Um, but he just, he's on his own, he, you know, yeah. he's just doing his own thing. And so Stubborn. I don't sleep. Yeah, he eats all the time, <laughs> he's all, all the time. And so, and he's demanding of me. He knows what he wants and yeah. he wants it now. He's like, he be good. Then like, as soon as his mama walk in the room, <laughs> eyes like, go to her. And he start like, like, you need to come get me now. So y'all pray for him. <laughs> but I say that to say, that the harvest takes work yeah for sure yeah like when you see something come to pass like so when we visualize something happening Mm -hmm. we don't visualize the weight that it will come with it but i think that's why it's important that when you're working towards what you're having faith for you're building the care to to sustain it yeah yeah but also if you're doing things for the lord in the lord's timing he ain't gonna give it to you until you're ready oh like what? that's good <laughs> stop no that is good but that's, that's true though so he would like i don't know how he does it mean, but he would like hold back things or like put you through you. Yeah. the the They're not ready yet. refinery yeah, yeah. like yeah. like for instance i feel like trucking has been a refinery for me mm-hmm. for the next season for mm-hmm. wherever god has for me next because mm-hmm. he it forced me to grow mm-hmm. as a, as a man, as a leader, as mm-hmm. a, as a provider. It forced me to grow. So I'm thinking through too, like I'm more of an experienced mom now. So one thing that oh, yeah. it don't make the newborn phase harder, but the things that I'm going through, I know that this too shall pass. Like yeah, I yeah. know that he will stop screaming at me. Yeah, he will. When I walk in the room, he, he gonna stop screaming. He he definitely gonna start doing that. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. as a, if I was a younger mom, I don't know that I would have received this blessing the same way that yeah. I am now. Or like, even post post 
if you didn't have the V-backs. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have three girls from the jump. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have seen it as a miracle. Yeah. Um, another thing that I think is important, we, we have to say this. Once you get the miracle, once you receive the thing that you have faith for, it's very important not to worship the process or worship the thing. Yeah. yeah. That's where stuff gets weird. That's where all the stuff gets weird on social media. Like, oh, the universe. Oh, uh, you know, this is how you manifest. This is how you do the lucky girl syndrome. Y'all are worshiping the process. You're not worshiping the giver. Yeah. You're worshiping the gift. You're not worshiping the giver. That's where stuff gets weird. That's where stuff starts getting out of control and and, and spiraling out of control. Um, we're talking about like us worshiping the gift would be us worshiping our son yeah. and having like, oh, he here. He finna go to the NFL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Myra was talking about how like when parents do that, then the, what were we saying? Then they put themselves. They put like, oh, I play basketball, so yeah. So I, I'm a hooper. So Kai gonna be a hooper. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing is you putting really your insecurities and your, your really your selfish desires mm-hmm. on a child that that may not even be his calling. His like calling. God might not be like, calling him to that. He could be. He could be cold in like technology or like orchestra. great at speaking or or, or whatever. Like I always whatever. use orchestra because yeah. neither of us play instruments, so that would yeah, be a stretch. <laughs> but his gifting and calling could be something completely different. Yeah. Right. But I don't know that when I'm worshiping the gift and exactly. not the giver. If I'm worshiping the giver, the giver will tell me, he will give me yes. a divine word for why this little boy is on this earth. Yeah. And because I'm not so attached to the gift, I give my son the space to make mistakes. Yes. I give my son the space to figure out what it is that God has called him to do. Yeah. And I think that's, that's with anything. Like if you're asking God for a certain career and yeah. you start worshiping that career instead of the God that gave you the career, yeah. the minute that's stripped from you, you don't know who you are. Yeah. When who you are has not changed. Or oh, you put your you put your peace in your your mm. your uh, what's the word? your hope and your your hope in that occupation. Yep. And you said like when an occupation gets stripped or mm-hmm. that occupation isn't as sexy as you thought it would be. Oh. Then, oh man, oh uh, nah, bro. Your peace comes from the Lord. Your joy comes from the Lord. Yep. The occupation you enjoy, mm-hmm. but it ain't you thank your God source. For it. It's man. not your source. It yep. Your source. That's I love Tony Evans says that. He says, listen, everything on this earth is a resource. God is your only source. Yeah. When you get those confused, that's when you get yeah. jacked up. Yeah, for real. Okay, so I'm gonna leave y'all with this last last verse. So hang on to Matthew seven and seven. And I'll read eight too. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. I think this is a conversation that we have to continue to have in the faith. This is not prosperity gospel. This is not, you know, whatever. But this is a conversation that we as believers need to own. I feel like the world has taken it and manipulated it because they didn't see people like they didn't see believers operating in it enough. Yeah. Like they see too many believers living in lack. They see too many believers that don't have, you know, dreams and hopes. And I feel like that's the, yeah. where the world took it and, and, and turned it into all this other stuff. You don't need to manifest. You don't need to, you can manifest the way God tells you to manifest. Let me say that because I think that's where trust is broken too, because yeah, you can ask and receive. You can think all these things. You can visualize it. You can see it. The Bible tells us all yeah. these things. The world took it and watered it down. Yeah. But there is something that God asks of us. And so that is living in holiness and righteousness. And that we can't earn his favor and his miracles, but we can position ourselves yeah. for it. Yeah. Because I've got, I have gotten a lot of things from God that he's done in spite of my sin and mm-hmm. in spite of who I that's am. True. Yeah. And so I don't think that's a prerequisite forgetting the things from God that you desire. So I don't know what it is that you desire, but uh, I just wanted to encourage y'all with that. Okay, let's pray. Uh, you want to pray? Yeah, I'll pray. Okay, we'll pray. You want me to pray and then you pray or you pray? And then you? Uh, I'll pray to you pray. Okay. All right. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for our trials. I thank you for everything you put us through, Lord. In fact, that we can grow. And Lord, I just pray that you'll continue to be with us and that we'll know that we're not doing things alone, but you have sent 
your son to die for us, Lord. So we'll know that, um, that we're not alone and that we, we're not doing this by ourselves, but we're doing it with you. We're doing it with your Holy spirit and Lord, that you have built a community of brothers and sisters around us. And Lord, I just pray over any desires that's in our heart. Yeah. I pray that Lord, that you will just instill the faith inside of us, mm -hmm. uh, that we will strengthen our faith, uh, through encouragement, through the body of Christ, through encouragement, through, through your Holy spirit as well. And Lord, I just pray for, um, anybody that's dealing with, um, career issues mm -hmm. and they're they're trying to decide whether what next step they should go and lord i just pray that you'll increase their faith yeah i pray that they'll just believe in the skills and the the self-discipline that yes. you put inside of them yeah. so they can really pursue what you have put in them mm -hmm. and they can really pursue their heart's desire and the things that you want for them um just bless this just bless this time that we had together yeah. and lord i pray that this video will be a blessing to other people as well yeah in jesus name God, I pray for everybody under the sound of our voice. Lord, I know that they have deep desires, something that they are, they feel like they're begging you for. God, I pray that they would feel a sense of peace, that they don't have to beg you for anything anymore. Lord, I pray that they would walk into their kinship, Lord, of being just your sons and your daughters. God, I pray for forgiveness of anything that they've done, Lord, to try to manipulate the situation. God, I pray that they would own that forgiveness and walk in it and operate in it. God, I pray that they would just believe that they can do everything that your word says that they can do. Lord, I pray that they would not turn to, I gotta ask for forgiveness for any of us, Lord, that have turned to the world. God, and turn to this, this, this new age, all of this nonsense, God, to try to draw our strength from God. I pray that they would just turn to you. Yeah. They would come back that they would humble themselves, ask for forgiveness, but then God, that they would be bold to ask you for the things that is requiring big faith from them. Yeah. Lord, I'm, I'm speaking big faith over everyone that sat, especially everyone that sat to the end of this video to wait and just see God, what it is that they could do differently in their life. And so Lord, I'm praying just yeah. for a fresh anointing to fall God for faith, to build up Lord in this community of people. And I'm praying that your sons and daughters would just be bold again and asking yeah. you for the things and not asking you for their sake, God, yeah. and for their glory, but for your glory, God, it's time for believers to start living lives or that attracts people not to our lives, but to you. Yeah. And so God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for everyone on this video. We thank you for our miracle. God, we, we pray that we would just never take for granted seeing your hand move in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Bye guys.